This is my Triumph Street Triple R. So it's winter time in uh, New York, so I decided to make some changes. So recently, to keep myself warm, I bought a pair of Oxford heated grips. Uh, now, the thing is that this is a sport bike. It does not have an accessory panel, and um, otherwise, I, and normally you just hook these up directly to the battery. Uh, I decided I didn't want to trust myself to remember to turn off the heated grips uh, every time I shut down so uh, so that it wouldn't drain, drain the battery. So I decided to make a switched circuit so that the heated grips would only be on when I turned on the ignition and uh, when I turned off the ignition they would turn off automatically. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do to create a uh, switch circuit is um, put the components that hook up directly to the battery together. Uh, what I'm going to use for that is um, this, uh, I've got a, I've got an inline uh, fuse circuit, um, a relay, the uh, relay connectors, and some, uh, some terminals and splices, and uh, I'll get to those, uh, you know, as we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, take this uh, inline fuse, and uh, what I'm going to do is use this as uh, basically the main fuse for my switch circuits. Um, the components that are going to hook up to the um, to the switch circuits are going to have their own fuses, but this is going to be a, um, but this is going to have a main fuse, um, in, in case, uh, you know, as a stopgap against any, uh, large power surges. Uh, what I've got here is a, uh, 30 amp fuse. Um, I had to find these, uh, very special, uh, small ones, uh, that go in this, uh, inline fuse. So, um, but fortunately, um, after a couple tries, I, I found a place and um, they, they fit right in there. So, uh, what's uh, this side uh, and this is going to hook up directly to the battery. I think I need a little bit more space here. I'll just uh, strip off a little bit of insulation. All right, I've got some uh, thicker heat shrink tube. Let me just make sure that, um, let me just make sure that's gonna fit over, uh, over this, uh, which it does. So now I'll get back to uh, doing what I need to do. So what I'm, what uh, the next step here is going to be, uh, as I said again, I'm gonna crimp this. Actually, uh, some people might consider this redundant. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just add a little solder um, up here in uh, the front. And, uh, you know, proper soldering technique, heat it up uh, outside and then uh, feed in the feed in the soldering, after, feed in the solder after it heats up. Just feed a little in, just to make sure this uh, this connection is just extra in there, and extra liable. There we go. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, is hook up this to um, to the relay. Let me just go over quickly how relays work. So. Um, Here's a relay diagram. What we have here is a, um, here at uh, port 30, is uh, the connection to the battery that's always going to be on. 
and here is a switch. For example, we might call, the, you know, we could regard this, say, as the uh, motorcycle ignition uh, switch. And um, when this turns on, it'll send power to port 86, but normally it's off. When um, that's off, here at port 87, no power is going to out to the device. But when power comes on to port 86, then um, the switch closes, uh, the internal switch. So what we have here um, is a relay di diagram and we have uh, five ports. Uh, port 30 uh, is connected directly to the battery. There's always power coming on to this. Uh, port 86, that's the control port. When the uh, control port is off, say when my um, motorcycle ignition is off, then um, no power is going to travel over port 87. But when I turn the motorcycle on, then an internal switch inside the relay closes, allowing power to flow from the battery on port 30 to port 87. So even though uh, power is always going to be on on port 30, no power comes on to port 87 to the device, whatever I'm hooking this up to, until there is power on the control, uh, control line on port 86. Just to show you um, how this all matches up, on, on this relay on the other side, if I uh, turn this over, as you can see, the, um, the individual uh, metal contacts, the shape of them match up to uh, the way it looks on the diagram. And that's how we know, um, that, that's how we know which port is which. Now with the relays I have, they come with uh, this, these, um, this relay connector um, oh, so I don't have to you know solder any connections directly uh, on onto the the relay connectors um, so you know if we put this in we can see how they map um, this blue wire is going to uh, go directly to the battery uh, this white wire here this is the control. This is the control line that um, that controls whether power is on or off through this yellow wire, which is what's going to go to the device. Um, this red wire is is, is a reverse switch. Uh, we're not going to use that, but um, the idea is that when the control switch is off, uh, the the reverse switch is on. When the control switch is on then this reverse uh, this reverse line uh, is off, but we're not going to use that right now. I'm just going to fold it up. Uh, finally, as you may have guessed, uh, the black wire just goes to ground. So as you can see, this is my inline fuse. And uh, what I'm going to do here is connect these two things so that here you have battery positive, and uh, that's going to go to port 30. This time I'm, uh, I'm gonna try to use this uninsulated um, uh, butt connector, uh, and I'm going to first uh, crimp the two connections, then solder them, uh, then uh, cover it in some, some heat shrink. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, the first step here, obviously, strip off, uh, oops, strip off, uh, some some wire uh, so we've got some exposed strip off the insulation add some wire we do the same on this side fortunately it's pre-stripped but let me give it a little bit more space all right i think i'm going to use what is this extremely useful tool which i recommend to everybody a pair of helping hands in here, insert this wire, actually 
unfortunately I don't quite need this yet. So, put this wire on, crimp it. It's pretty snug. Uh, let me let me see which is the right size for some insulation. Not quite. All right, this will fit over it. So, always, always remember. Put the insulation on first. This goes into the uh, uninsulated butt connector. here. All right, that's pretty solid. Now, as I said, what I'm going to do now is solder that connection shut, so to make sure that it's really in there. And of course, everyone should have a soldering iron. They are, they are pretty darn helpful. So I'm just going to heat up both the wire and the butt connector here. And as you can see, since I, uh, it's helpful since I've got the uh, solder here and the soldering iron in my other hand, it's helpful to have this, uh, this pair of helping hands here. And there it goes, now it's heating up. some solder on that side and I'm just gonna solder this other side for a bit there we go all right that should be nice and solid So now that that connection's all set, I can slip the heat shrink over it. Ugh, and uh, my mistake, it was a little hot. So, you know, well, lesson learned. I should have waited uh, until it cooled down for a bit. As you can see, it just already shrank right over. I should have seen that coming, but let me just uh, finish up that job. we go so we've got um, we've got that connection that goes from the battery to a fuse uh, over to the relay so um, the next step here is going to uh, you know bring it down uh, bring this whole um, setup down to my motorcycle and, uh, and make the rest of the connections So it's this yellow wire here that goes to things like the license plate lights and um, the rear light um, that supplies constant power. Um, the turn signals, for example, have these uh, green and red, green and white um, uh, wires that you know provide intermittent power. The brake light, for example, is controlled by this uh, uh, green and orange. Uh, this, this green and orange wire, which tells the brake light to turn on or off. But this, the constant power, which you get when you turn the key and will turn on the rear light is from this yellow wire. So that's the one I'm going to tap into.